This year, American students aren't just returning to their classes or team sports or lunches in the cafeteria. They're also returning to the devastating reality that at any moment, on any day, a shooter could open fire and change or halt the trajectory of their young lives. It happened again this week at Appalachia High School in Georgia. Police say a new student, a 14-year-old on his first full day of school, walked in with an AR-15 style gun rifle that his father gave him as a gift. Sophomore Cameron Leroy was in class Wednesday morning when he heard an unfamiliar noise in the hallway after 10 a.m. His teacher told students to crouch down in the corners of the classroom. Here he is explaining his terrifying story to NBC News. Did you know what was happening or did you think it was possibly some other noise? Some other noise, honestly, but then when it, it, would, when it wouldn't stop, um, I started getting concerned. And when my teacher looked out the window towards getting in the corner, I kind of knew that it was a shooting. So from there, I was just praying to God to keep me safe and all my friends. I was just praying that I made it out of there alive. A sheriff said officers arrived to carnage. He said, quote, there was blood everywhere. You smell the gunpowder, a lot of screaming, yelling, little bit of chaos. Two students and two teachers were killed. Nine others were injured. And while American students live in survival mode, learning skills during active shooter drills that they may need to survive a mass shooting one day, children in Ukraine are struggling to learn and find refuge in the middle of war. They are weathering air raids, bombings, and the death of loved ones. One teacher in Kyiv told the New York Times that she starts every morning by checking the social media accounts of two former students who are now in the army to check if they are still alive. A principal at the same school said children are like tuning forks, a reflection of what is happening in our lives. There's a reason that a child is lying on the desk. Maybe he has not slept all night because he was waiting for news from someone close. These interviews were conducted before Russia carried out a large-scale bombing in Kyiv on Monday, the first day of school in Ukraine. Then on Wednesday, Russia bombed three schools, a recreational center, a residential building in Lviv, killing three young sisters and their mother. According to UNICEF, nearly 2,000 children have been killed or injured since Russia invaded Ukraine back in 2002. And then there's Gaza, where there are no bomb shelters and where no children have been receiving any formal education since October 7th. Nine-year-old uh, nine Tala Hossam Oba Ajwa was supposed to start school this week. Like many children in Gaza, she had spent one year playing in the streets, trying to find a pocket of joy with her family and friends, even as the war raged all around her. On Tuesday afternoon, she begged her parents just to let her go out and go rollerblading, her favorite thing to do, right outside of their building. And just like that, her parents heard a loud explosion and their vibrant, energetic daughter was killed by an Israeli airstrike, all while still wearing her rollerblades. Her father spoke to an NBC News crew about her death. يعني آخر لحظات عمرها إنه كانت نازلة تلعب وتنبسط زي أطفال العالم ما بيلعبوا بنبسطه لكن كان صواريخ الاحتلال أسرع إلها من إنها تنزل تلعب وتنبسط وقتلتها بدون أي سنب وبدون أي حق وانتقلت لعند ربها وربنا يرحمها وحسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل Tala is one of more than 16,000 Palestinian children who have been killed since Israel's attacks on Gaza began, and the actual number is actually much higher. These children have been killed in their homes, in refugee camps, on the streets playing. Education is heavily valued in Gaza. In fact, before the war, among all Palestinian territories, the literacy rate was 98%. But as students there enter a second year without access to proper schooling, some experts have accused Israel of scholasticide. The killing of students and educators, along with the destruction of schools, is devastating the entire educational system that Palestinians work so hard to build as a place of safety and refuge for students. There's truly something wrong if the first week of school around the world is meant to be, which is meant to be filled with excitement, is instead filled with fear. If parents here in the U.S. and around the world are worrying their children might not come home at the end of the day, then it's a problem. 
This worry, this social burden shouldn't fall on parents and teachers alone. Politicians and world leaders need to step up and show some humanity instead of treating children in schools as pawns in their political games.